Hello and welcome to the SWE Move tutorial for Linux. In this tutorial we're going to be going over how to get you started on writing full stack applications for SWE Move. We're going to install the SWE binaries, we're going to install the Move Analyzer, and then we're also going to go through installing Visual Studio Code and Node just to make sure that you have everything you need to build the front end applications. Um, full stack applications rather. So let's go ahead and get started. First things first, always important, do sudo apt upgrade. In this tutorial, sometimes I'll use apt, but also I might use apt get. Um, this is also some certain, uh, this, these documentations still use apt get. Just be aware that they're essentially the same command. apt get was the thing that, that launched with Ubuntu. However, it is you know about 20 years old, 25 years old by now. Um, and they, that's why they developed apt to replace, and apt is a lot newer. So I personally prefer to use apt, even though a lot of tutorials are gonna, are gonna tell you to do apt get. It's totally fine. Um, you can use either one, it doesn't really matter. So we're gonna go ahead um, and let this finish. What I just ran, apt upgrade, what this does is apt is the package manager on Linux. Um, it is going to, it is going to go ahead and upgrade all the packages that we have on the computer. I'd say that APT is one of the main reasons why I personally recommend using Linux as opposed to micro to uh, Windows and and Apple in order to just really do any kind of development as opposed even even beyond just we move. Um, typically, uh, things typically Linux is the best suited for developers, and if you're a developer and you want to you want things to work really well on your machine, it's great to use Linux because Linux is very well supported by the people that develop these developer tools. Um, if you're developing, you know, something that's going to be used by developers, it's generally the easiest to, you know, just make sure it works really well on Linux and Mac because those are the two operating systems that most programmers use, and they're both very similar to each other. Um, and in fact, on the the Windows tutorial for SweeMove, that's part of what I recommend is to install, a, essentially, to install a virtualized Linux inside of your Windows machine. And did that work? Yep, it worked. There we go. So we are going to install all of the prerequisites going through this docs.sui.io, um, the installed instructions, and don't, don't worry about typing in this in directly. There's gonna be links in the description of the video. We're gonna go through the Linux prerequisites, and we just did this, so now we're going to install all of these packages. Sudo apt install curl. One, one trick I'm gonna do is instead of typing out all of these things with apt, you can just press space, you know, curl space, Get all, and that will download both packages at the same time. You can do that with as many packages as you want. So we're going to go ahead and config. I'm going to make this. Actually, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Uh, there we go. Just so it's easier to read. Package config. It says that this is optional, but there's no harm in installing it, and it might fix some issues on your system. So. Better safe than sorry. Client dev, lib pq dev, build essential. Lib ssl dev. That's because I misspelled that. Lib ssl dev. Press yes. Press y for yes. And while we get that running, um, so curl is a command line that grabs a URL and downloads what that's, what's there at that URL. All these things we're installing just because later down the line when we do the rest compile, we're gonna need some of these programs. Git all, you know, cargo needs git, a lot of things need git. You should already know what git is. CMake, this is uh, something that's similar to pip. It's used to build C and, and C++ programs. GCC is a compiler pro compiler tool chain for C and C++, which we need because the Rust compile involves some of its dependencies are actually C++ code, so we need that. We need tooling around C++. LibSSL, uh, you need this whenever you're doing uh, network things because this is a this is something that helps helps certain programs do uh, what's known as an SSL handshake. Um, so just any, it's just kind of a, a low level. Uh, low-level library that's useful for for uh, HTTP kind of stuff. Package config, not really sure what that does, but it says we need it. Libclang, Clang is another C++ compiler. For the same reason we need to we need to install C and C++ code. Libpq, this is a Postgres library, so we need that because uh, somewhere in the stack I'm not sure where, but somewhere in the stack we use Postgres. 
And build essential is stuff like header files for C and just, again, just more stuff that we can use to build C and C++ programs. And so, yeah, this may take a while. It says it's about 3%. We will reconvene when this is done installing. Now that the prerequisites are installed, let's go ahead and install uh, cargo via rustup. And the rustup command is at this website, rustup.rs. I believe it's also provided in the documentation, but you can use either one, it doesn't matter. Oops, let me paste it in without the weird characters. So what this is doing is installing Rust up. Um, and, and for Rust, when you're building Rust code and just press enter, you know, defaults. When for Rust, there's two components to the to the compiler. There's or to the tool chain rather. There's Rust up, and then there's Cargo. Cargo is the thing that's analogous to pip or npm in in Python and JavaScript. It's the thing that organizes all of your dependencies, makes sure they're up to date. Uh, it's how you compile code. Um, where Rust up is, it's it's essentially a script that that handles the different kinds of Rust that you might want to have installed. For example, in Rust, there's this thing called Stable, and there's also another thing called Nightly. Nightly is a version of Rust that's updated every night. It has all the latest and greatest features and bug fixes, where, or, well, other way around. Uh, it's, it has the latest and greatest features, but Stable is a lot more, it's a lot more, you know, stable as the name imply. There's all the bug fixes. It's a lot more guaranteed to work. Um, so in the rest of the tutorial, we're going to end up using stable. And RustUp is the thing that allows you to switch from, you know, more recent and older Rust versions and also from nightly to stable. Another thing you're going to find is that sometimes when you're running these commands, it tells you, um, we just installed RustUp, but it doesn't, it, the, the terminal's not able to find it. And that's because we can do one of two things. We can either close or reopen the shell. Um, well, I guess we can also just run this command that it tells us, but what I prefer to do is to just open a new terminal with bash, which is, this is analogous to just opening and closing, uh, or closing and opening the, the terminal, and this allows us to see rest up. Now that we have rest up, we should also have cargo, perfect. Now that we have cargo installed in Rust, we're going to get, we're going to go ahead and get started on the compile, which is going to take a really long time. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy paste this command, Oops. we're going to right click paste and we're going to wait for this to run. Uh, this is going to take a while, especially if you don't have the best internet like I do. Um, and the reason why is because when Cargo compiles something, it, it downloads all of the dependencies and it compiles literally everything in your entire dependency tree from source. So what that means is that if you have a dependency that depends on something else, that depends on something else, depends on something else, you know, if, if you have a, a decent sized program, all of a sudden there's 2,000 things that you need to compile from source. And that's, and that's the issue here is that there's about 2,000 dependencies and it needs to compile every single one, last one of them. And that takes a while. That's one of the, the biggest drawbacks of Rust is that compile time is very slow. So don't be worried about this taking, I, I would anticipate this taking about 30 minutes if not longer. Um, and don't, don't be alarmed if, you know, you get like 75% of the way through and there's one or two things that hang. For example, the the uh, Librox DB sys crate takes a while. It might take like five or ten minutes just by itself. So if you think it stopped, uh, don't don't cancel restart it because if you do that, you're gonna have to do the whole thing over again. It's very annoying, um, but it's what we have to deal with at the moment. And I'm sure they're working on a fix. So uh, while we're waiting for this compile to complete, we're going to do something else just because just to save time. So I'm going to open a new tab. I'm going to uh, make it bigger again so we can see it. And we're going to install node version, version manager. So node version manager is similar to Rust up uh, in that, <coughs> excuse me, in that Rust, you, node ha like Rust has a bunch of different versions. Um, some pieces of JavaScript require a node like v16, some of it require v18. So, uh, and by default, Node is, is especially bad for this, where it's really hard to have multiple versions of Node installed in your system. Like if you install v16, um, just with the regular way of installing Node, you have to completely uninstall and then install Node v14. So what this script does is it makes it very easy to install the latest Node version, and this is the way that I always recommend people to install Node. And we're going to need JavaScript because later on in this full stack tutorial, we're going to be going ahead and compiling front end code. So you need this to write the front end. And 
double check, see if it worked. It did not work. Open a new shell. Does it work now? Yes, it does. Perfect. And we're going to use NVM install uh, LTS to get the long-term support version of Node. If you already have Node installed, I would I personally I would recommend uninstalling Node and just installing NVM and then reinstalling Node. Um, but you could if you already have like V18 Node V18 installed you know you could probably get away with with just keeping this and skipping this step although NVM is the way that it's generally recommended to install node especially if you have a lot of different projects that use JavaScript there's also another thing with uh, NVM is that if you uh, I've had issues with this not getting added to the path so even if it is installed and you have closed up the terminal and you type NVM it won't fully it won't it won't recognize the command um, so just if you're on bash you want to you want to make sure that a file called uh, you want to make sure that that there exists this file called uh, dot bash profile yeah so you, so you want to make sure that there either exists a file called .bash profile or uh, it's either .bash profile or .bash rc. These are two files that bash looks in for uh, for binaries. And if neither of these are created, I believe NVM won't put in this. It, it won't automatically run the code that makes it that allows the terminal to see the NVM uh, sign. So now we should have node installed, double check that, node version, great, and we have LTS on node. Again, we're still waiting for the compile to run, so we're going to go to Visual Studio Code and we're going to run through how exactly to download Visual Studio Code. It's pretty likely that you already have Visual Studio Code installed on Ubuntu, um, however, I think it's worthwhile going through it in case you're just starting from scratch and you're just new to Linux. So we're going to go ahead and download this. You always want to, to install the .deb. It's possible there is a snap, but I personally prefer this. I believe it's the more standard version, and there are some issues that resolve itself by just using the .deb. And the way to actually install that is we're going to go back to our terminal, and we're going to go to our downloads, where it just installed, or we just downloaded the, the, the .deb file, and we're going to do sudo apt install, and then we're going to do .slash code, press tab for autocomplete, and then press enter. Enter our password, and then it's going to install the package from the file that we just downloaded. All right, and we're back. Uh, I noticed that while I was looking at the video, I had a little bar down here, and that's because I'm running this version in this instance of Ubuntu on a virtual machine, and that is because I don't want to mix this environment and my personal environment that I use to code, where I already have all this stuff installed. You know, just for demonstration purposes, so I make I can make sure that you know you're not going to see anything that I don't there that uh, I don't see. So, with that done, we're going to install a couple of extensions. Um, for example, the first extension we're going to install is even better Toml, which is a extension that gives support for syntax highlighting for Toml, which stands for I think it's Tom's Obvious Markup Language, something like that. Uh, and Toml is essentially just JSON. Uh, it's it's used as a configuration file format because it's a lot easier to read than JSON, but it is more or less equivalent to JSON, and it, it, it's pretty obvious why it's, it's JSON if you look at it. So now that we have that installed, we're going to also want to install this Move Analyzer uh, plugin, which is also going to install the Move Syntax highlighting for VS Code. And again, if you have already have Visual Studio Code installed. Uh, you probably don't need to reinstall it, but you do need to install this move analyzer and this move, move syntax. And option the the Toml one is optional, but it's also very helpful. And that is because for our next step, we are going to install move analyzer. Um, what move analyzer is is it's a it's it's a way of you as a developer seeing what problems exist in the code before it comes time to compile. For example, if you misspell something. Where if if you know you, you put a type into a function that doesn't actually accept that type, you're going to get an error from Move Analyzer, and that's going to make it a lot quicker for you to discover and fix errors in your code. So you don't have to you, you don't have to 
you know, compile and then you see, oh, there's a million errors and then you have to figure out where the error is coming from. It just makes it a lot easier to develop and move. So in order to install that, it's a similar um, process that is just the regular binary. Um, it's the, this under this IDE, install this move analyzer. Again, it's gonna be the description and just paste and let it run. Again, this is gonna be, this is gonna be a, it's not gonna be as long as the actual binary, uh, but it is probably about five, 10 minutes. So that's why I like to let this compile, let this run while we are working on the, the smaller things. So we will again, we'll all uh, cut and we'll be back when these are done installing. So we're still sitting here waiting for the CLI to compile, but we did just finish the compile on the move analyzer. So we're gonna go ahead and try to get that working. So if we have this piece of sweet move code here, don't worry about downloading this. This is just for an example. This is the A192 game made by the ethos people. Um, and as you can see, it doesn't really work. We'd like to be able to hover over things and be able to see what type there is. We'd also like to be able to jump to where the thing is defined. So first, to try to bug this, we're going to again just close and reopen Visual Studio Code. And it's possible that that just fixes it for you immediately. It's possible that it just works first time. You don't even have to uh, close and reopen. But for us, unfortunately, it doesn't. And I believe the reason why is because it's unable to find the move analyzer binary. So the way that we're going to fix this is we're going to open the settings and we do that by pressing control and then comma, or we can also, uh, we can also open the, the settings, uh, where is it? Yeah, it's somewhere in one of these menus, but I, I prefer to just do control uh, comma and that'll open the settings for you. So then we can go to the move analyzer settings and it's looking for a move analyzer just by its base name. And for some reason it's not finding that. So we can fix that. We, the first thing we wanna make sure is that we do actually have move analyzer. So we can do the version, check what version it is. Yeah, it looks like we do have it. So we're going, and then in order to figure out where move, where to actually install move analyzer, we can use the which command, which tells you where the binary is located. And then we can copy paste this directory. Looks like it's installed somewhere in cargo. And we can save this. Um, yeah, then we can make sure that's in our settings. And then does that immediately fix it? Yep, it looks like that was the issue. So what this lets us do, what Move Analyzer lets us do is, let's say we're in the middle of this move code. You know, oh, I see this game board A192. I don't know where it's defined. Uh, oh. Or maybe that's a bad example. Yeah, I see this function. I don't know what it does. Look, go to the definition, and then it, you can see where the the code is actually uh, created. Um, looks like it's not yet implemented for uh, for packages. Which is what the issue was, which is totally fine. And you know, if we hover over things, it tells you what the type of what type it is. See that this is a uh, yeah. We see that this is a boolean. So this just makes it substantially easier for us to uh, for us to use move code, and it looks like we're still waiting on this this uh, compile to finish. Even though it looks like it's most of the way there, it's still going to take another like maybe 15, 20 minutes. So we're just going to let this run, and we're going to come back when it's all done, and just to make sure that it actually installed correctly. Well, it looks like our CLI compile just finished. So let's double check, make sure it works. Sweet. Yep, we have the command. All right, everything looks good. Uh, remember, we just installed the SWE binary, SWE move. We have uh, NPM and uh, VS Code already to set up. Um, be ready to watch the next video. Link will be in the description about how to actually use the SWE command and then on to how to build a full stack move application. Thanks for watching.